we hold on until the end. They are leaving this out of the Bible when they teach at the churches. It's in the Bible, no question about it. But they're leaving it out. The importance of entering into salvation. How to enter into salvation. That's what these scriptures are really about. Let's read them together. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 11. He says, pray always, just like Jesus said. Jesus said, pray always in Luke 21, 36, that you'll be what? Counted worthy. Don't take it for granted that you're the elect, but pray always that you're counted worthy of the calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power. The work of faith with power. There's two important things in this. The work of faith and power. Unfortunately, many people don't have the power. They claim to have the faith, but they are lacking the power. Your faith needs to have power. But unfortunately, we have a great deal of people who have a form of godliness. Churchgoers, lukewarm people. They look like they're Christians, but they deny the power thereof. The power of what? The power of what? The power that comes from the right kind of faith. The power that comes from the right kind of faith. A faith that brings salvation. A living faith. A faith that is alive and active through the works. You can see it, touch it. You can analyze it, observe it. It's measurable. Paul is telling the Thessalonians that he's praying for them and remembering their work of faith and their labors of love. Their works of faith. Again, we see that term, work of faith. This is talking about the right kind of works, my brothers and sisters. This is talking about God's works, which comes from what? Faith. We have to have the works that come from faith. Not the dead works of a man. That's what this verse is talking about. Not of works. The dead works of a man cannot save you. We're saved by grace. Through faith. This is the faith right there. Faith. It doesn't say through works of faith here because it's understood that this kind of faith that's in verse 8 is a active, alive, measurable faith tangible. This faith right here in verse 8 is the same faith being talked about over here. The works of faith. This kind of faith is alive. This kind of faith comes from grace. And without the works of faith, to prove you have faith, you have dead faith. James tells us that faith without this work Without that precious work of evidence, faith, if it does not have those works, is dead being alone. This faith must be married to the works of God. It must produce the fruit of God in your life. Verse 19, or it is no different than the devils. For the devils also believe in one God and tremble. Their faith does not produce righteousness. Their faith does not produce works of fruits of God. The devils believe like most people believe. Again, verse 20. Don't be vain in your faith. Faith without works is dead. The faith must have the works. If the faith doesn't have the works, it is dead. It is the devil kind of faith. The dead faith of a man, a dead faith of his religion, a dead faith of the carnal man is the works that cannot save you. He says in Hebrews, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Let us leave the simple things and go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, but going on towards faith in God again. This faith right here towards God will be the kind of faith that James talked about that will have works behind it. 
The evidence of a believing man can show it by how he lives his life. Here you see the dead works right here compared to the living works of God. Yes, God has works that are created for us to do. And if we do his works, we are in his sanctification and in his process of salvation. And although we're not perfect yet, we're working unto perfection. Repenting from the dead works. The works that man produces to try to get to heaven, to be a good person on your own strength, to trust in your own abilities, your own talents and skills, your own. These are dead. But when we do the work of faith towards God, this kind of faith that has the works of faith brings salvation, my friends. We must do God's works, not these dead works. These are dead works, and God told us to do His works. You see right here, the very next verse in Ephesians 2 tells us the difference between the two works. We see the difference between the two works, not of works. These are dead works. Verse 9, dead works of a man, dead works of carnality, dead works of the world, your own work, your own ability, your own strength, your own will, talents and skills that are outside of Christ. Outside of Christ, outside of knowing Him, being born in Him, following, obeying Him, outside of Him is the dead works of a man. Now we're being brought into Christ. Now we see that we were created in Him. Once we come in Him, we're created for good works. These works, good works, this is the works of faith. Here it leaves off the word faith, but it's talking about the works of faith. You see how it's talking about works here? It really is talking about the works of faith. It just doesn't say it. That we should do them. Walk in them. Produce these works of faith. So we see the dead works of a man right here in verse 9. Even though it doesn't say dead works, we know that it is. Because the dead works of a man cannot save you. Hebrews just told us that. Hebrews 6, 1, the dead works. Not laying again the repentance from dead works. We've turned away from our own ways, our own religious ideologies, our own systems, our own philosophies and sciences, our own efforts. And we've turned towards His works of faith, His faithfulness, His commands, His instructions. Guide my life now. I live in Him. Faith towards God. You see here, it doesn't say the word works. And over here, it doesn't say the word faith. If you put these two passages together, along with all the others that say works of faith, you'll understand what God is saying in Revelation. When he tells the churches, he that overcomes and keeps my works, my works until the end, he'll be saved. His works are different than the dead works of a man that cannot save him. His works are different we were created for these works, to be alive in Christ, not to be dead in Christ. If we're not alive in Christ, then our faith is what? Dead like the devils. This is the work of God in us, that we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, and we work with grace. He's telling us here in the Philippians to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Take it serious. Honor the calling. Treat it special. Treasure it. That's what fear and trembling means. Don't just squander it and juggle it around and treat it nonchalantly. Work out your salvation like you were called to do. For many are neglecting the calling. You're backslidden. You're lukewarm. And God is telling the churches, I have somewhat against you. There's some good things and there's some bad things. You have fallen from your first love. You have fallen from your first love. He says, remember that, where you have fallen from. And repent and do the first works. Now, these are the same faithful works of God. These are not the dead works that cannot save you, but the obedient works that can. Why? Because it's faithfulness. It's being faithful to do these works. This is obedience. This is what he wants to see. And without this, you have dead faith. 
You have dead faith. You have dead faith without these works. You are dead in your sins because the work of God is holiness and righteousness. If you knew how we were saved by grace, you would understand the works of faith and the importance concerning salvation. We need to adore the doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. Adore it and treasure it. Why? For the grace of God that appeared to all men brought this teaching to us. Grace was Jesus Christ. He appeared to all men in a human body. Why did he come in the flesh? To teach us salvation and to save us by his blood. Look at this. Grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Right here, right now, today. Turning from wickedness and sin and living holy. Why? Because we believe and we have faith. The works of faithfulness. Obedient faithfulness. 1 John 3, 9, whoever's born of God does not continue in sin, does not practice sin, does not perpetuate sin. Why? Because he's working his faith. A man who's working his faith is overcoming sin in his life. Says he cannot sin, he cannot continue to sin. Why? Because the Spirit of God in him is working, working, transforming, changing us. Are you dead or alive in Christ? I fear that you're dead in Christ and you're not alive. Repent and do the first works. Matthew 25, there's beautiful teachings of Jesus about the work of faith, about the work of God, about being obedient. You got the story of the ten virgins. Five of them were locked out. They were not prepared. They were locked out of the door. Because they did not prepare. They did not do. They weren't ready. They didn't labor in the faith. They were slothful and lazy. And they were cast away. You got the man who was on a journey who gave his servants talents and left them behind. And he came back and two of his servants were faithful and obeyed and produced a prophet. He tells the two, well done, my good and faithful servant. What did they do? They were faithful, but what did they do to be faithful? They produced work that was pleasing to the Lord. That's the work of faith. The living works of God inside a man. But the one who had one talent gave excuses. And his Lord called him a wicked and slothful servant. He took the gift, the talent that was given to him, but he did not do anything with it. He didn't plant it right. It wasn't alive. He didn't nurture it. He didn't handle it with fear and trembling, but he juggled it and squandered it. The Lord said, couldn't you have at least done this with it? Couldn't you have at least done something with the the talent I gave you? And eventually he's cast out. He was an unprofitable servant. God is simply telling us that our faith must have works. Your faith must have works. Or you're an unprofitable servant. And you will be cast into outer darkness. Where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, the Lord tells a story about the goats and the sheep. The goats and the sheep. What is the difference between the goats and the sheep? The works that they did. He says, for when I was hungry, you gave me meat. And when I was thirsty, you gave me water. And you you did these works. But to the ones who didn't do those works, he cast them into everlasting fire. Everlasting fire. Why did they get cast into everlasting fire? He says, because you didn't do those things. You didn't feed the poor. You didn't clothe the naked. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous who work the faith will go into life eternal. My precious brothers and sisters, you can teach this a million different ways. And I had a plan on how I was going to lay this out, but I just started flowing because it's all over the Bible. You can't miss it. It's right in your face.
If you don't obey Jesus, you're not going to get into heaven. That's the bottom line of saved by grace through faith. That's the internal spiritual meaning of that statement Christians love to put on t-shirts. They have no understanding of how to apply it to their lives. They have no understanding of what the dead works of a man which cannot save you and the godly works of faithfulness and obedience which can because it's part of your faith. It's part of your faith. You can't have faith without those works. They are one and the same. Just like Jesus, the Son and the Father are one. Your faith and your works must be part together. If you think you're getting into heaven and you're embracing your sin, and you're carrying on, comfortable in your sin, you are deceived. I feel sorry for you.